Okay, in this video we're going to work on our lampshade. So we're going to create all the pieces for our lamp and then assemble them. Um, so this video is going to cover the lampshade and then I'm going to make I think a third video that covers just the extra pieces um, in case you need help with kind of those. But those are basically going to be using most of the same tools we're already utilizing in here. Um, so for this one I'm going to go ahead and use my end gun and I'm going to go to the top view. Now I know in the lampshade I said to use the left view or the front view. For this one I'm going to go on the top because I'm going to pull the 3D object up. So if I did it again in the left or the front view this time it would be on its side. So making sure that you're picking kind of the right view for the object you're working with can be a little bit tricky and takes a little bit of time but for this one I'm going to be pulling upward so I'm going to make it this view. All right. I'm just trying to make sure we can see it in this view, even though I say don't manipulate it and write it in this view, uh, we can still move around and look and stuff. So be careful when you're selecting things with the select and move tool. Again, it works fine, but it will move an object. So if there's something that you want to grab but don't want to accidentally move, you can always just use the select tool, which will select an object without moving it. All right. So for this, it doesn't really matter because I'm moving it in two dimensions and not a big deal. Now, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and pick my sides, and I'm going to pick something that looks good. So we'll say maybe I don't know, 23. Oh, you know what? You know what? Instead of an end gun, I'm going to pick a star. Delete. So I'm just going to delete that. Come back over here to the Create tab, and I'm going to go with star. So I want a funner looking shade. I like this one much better. All right, again, we're going to go to the modifier tab and modify it. The number of points, I'm going to pick something higher. Maybe we'll go with an even number, probably makes more sense than 23. And then we can play around with our setting. So we can change it up here and kind of modify this however we want. So I'm pretty happy with that look. Now, it may not look like much yet getting ready to do some fun stuff so we're going to go to the modifier tab we're going to add a modifier to this for this one I'm going to pick extrude which starts with E it's right after our edit mesh normals patch poly spline options and I'm going to go extrude and then amount I'm going to add some amount to that to bring it up now really you can see here if we move this over to uh, be on top of our lamp it up a bit too. You can almost kind of see how it might look, right? I don't hate that, but you know what? We're trying to we're trying to learn some tools, so we're gonna do a little bit of modification to that. Again, starting to get kind of a lamp look. I will say notice extrude did cap the top and bottom. So for this one we probably don't want it to cap. So I might turn these off. We'll keep it nice and hollow. So it looks a little bit more like a lampshade. And don't worry about the fact that there's no inside. I know in the last video I said 3D models only have one side. We're going to add another side to this in just a second too. Um, the other thing that's really cool about 3ds Max is sometimes the modifiers can be done in different order because it's still adding more and more to the model. Um, the order may or may not be as important or relevant. Sometimes it makes a big difference. It just depends on what you're making. And I would say, you know, experiment. The big thing about 3D modeling is it's all about practice and playing in there and getting to know how the tools work and kind of understanding a bit on how 3D modeling works. Um, and that only really comes with time and practice. We're going to get plenty in this class, but definitely don't be afraid to model whatever you want. You know, that's the big thing. Even for our midterm coming up, um, you'll need to make more models than just the ones we do in class. All right, so... <coughs> that looks pretty cool. Segments, though. Notice here in the left or the front view, there are no lines through the middle. Now, in 3D, uh, there really is no bending. You can bend 2D splines, but once you generate 3D um, geometry, there's no bending a polygon, right? So the only way to make a curved edge is to have more cuts or partitions. Uh, you can kind of think of it as a series of flat lines. So... I want this to have some give to it because we're going to play around with its shape. Right now, there's no cuts through the middle. So this thing 
could never not look like a cylinder. Even if I made one end smaller and one end bigger, which we're going to play around in a second, um, it would still have flat edges because there's nothing to bend. So here I'm going to up the number of segments. Now I'm going to just change it to four because I want to show you what I'm talking about. And we're going to add the taper modifier next. Now again, if I hit T, it'll just jump to taper or you can scroll down. Now adding this will kind of make more sense. So here we go. You can see I've added it in. Now that would have looked the same, but I'm going to add a curve to it too. Notice here you can actually curve in or curve out of the taper. So taper will make one end bigger or smaller. So you can see this nice bend. If we go back to my extrude and I lower the number of cuts, see there's no bend because there's no segments. The more segments you'll get, the smoother the bend will be. Now, most of you are probably uh, in the game design major. So something to keep in mind is polygon count does matter. So if I'm making this lamp for a game, I don't want to add any more complexity to the model than I have to. That's why you'll often see models in video games. Sometimes they look high resolution and great. Sometimes they look a little bit blocky. The less important stuff tends to be a lot more blocky than the really important stuff. And there's lots of tricks you can do with textures and normal maps and other fun things, um, shaders built into the engine, etc., to kind of fake detail where detail doesn't exist. So uh, something to kind of keep in mind, you don't want to make this more complex than you need to. I could put the number of segments to 50, and man, it'll look smooth, but it probably won't look that different than 6. So is it worth adding? Now, even if you're not in 3D graphics or if you're not bringing this into a game, it's still worth noting you don't want to make it more complex than you need to. Because even if I were doing this for a movie like Toy Story, um, you know, uh, if I was doing it for a film like that or, or one of the other Pixar movies, you know, yes, does it matter as much? No, but I still got to render the file. So even if I were going to render this in an animation, I wouldn't want to add complexity just for complexity's sake because it would add to my rendering time. Okay. Now, if you're doing a 3D print, that's a little bit different. For that, complexity is really not important at all. And the last element I'm going to add to this lamp shape is the shell modifier. So for this one, I'm probably going to need to scroll down to S, because there's lots of S's, and hit shell. That's where it's going to add that thickness. So if I zoom in here, you'll be able to see it a little better. See that edge? So now I said it won't render. Unless it's got an edge, now it has an edge on both sides. You can see overall it looks a little bit better in my viewport too. Okay, that's where I'm going to end uh, the video for the lampshade.